we want to thank God for tonight. We praise the name of the Lord who has called us and he has uh, been going along with us in this uh, three days uh, revival. And we bless the name of the Lord for all of us who are partaking and are sharing in the blessings of God. We thank God for yesterday and we thank God for today what the Lord is going to do today. Uh, as you know, what, this, the, what we tag this uh, revival with is uh, go ye into all the world, the entire world, and preach the gospel. And as the Lord is sending us out, this is a mandate that we must fulfill, a mandate that we must take as the Lord has given us as a church, uh, we are not fulfilling the mandate if we just stay at the wall, the four walls of our church, and we do not go out. He says, go ye into all the world. And you know, as we are doing now, the Lord is sanctioning it that we are going into all the world. The Lord is helping us as a family. We have been going through the world. You know, through internet, we have found an internet that will make people all over the world to hear the gospel. So this is another thing. And you know our own websites here, we make use of them to propagate the gospel. Because this is what the Lord has told us to do. If we just stay in our closet in the inside here and we never allow others to hear what we we are given, it means that we are heard in the word of God and God is not happy about it. So we thank God for the opportunity to come out and speak. We know that uh, as people are passing by, you know, people in their houses that are nearby, they are hearing us. And we know that one thing or the other will be picked as we speak the word of God. And not only that, all of us who are here, we are here for blessings and God is going to bless us. And you know, tonight what we want to really concentrate on is on, you know, the power of God that is able to heal, the power of God that is able to deliver, the power of God that is able to set free. So you are going to be changed by the power of God and you will receive all your blessings. But before then, let's close our eyes and pray. Blessed Lord, we thank you for tonight. We give glory to you because you are here to bless us. We pray, O oh Lord, that we open our understanding and help us to be able to grasp the truth. And that, Lord, by grasping the truth, we will be able to apply and make our lives to be what you want it to be. Lord, thank you because you are here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, please turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29, I'm looking at verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So this is what God is making us to see that God has a purpose for our lives. God has a purpose for your life as an individual. And as, as you are here, your coming here tonight is not by accident. Your being here at the presence of the Lord is not by a mistake. It's not that, you know, it just, uh, it's just a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. It's just the perfect will of God for you to be here at this blessed time. There are many other people who should be here and are not here. It's not that, uh, you know, God is not calling them, but they have not been able to see where God wants them to be or what God is saying to them. But as you have the opportunity to hear and to be able to do what God is asking you to do, is a great blessing. And I know your blessings will not pass you by tonight in the name of Jesus. So the Lord is saying, I know the thought that I th think towards you. The Lord knows everything about you. He, he has formed you. He has perfected everything about you. And so it's not just by accident that uh, you know you are seeing the face of God. You are, sh uh, you are coming to the presence of God. And you know, I want you to turn with me to Zechariah chapter 8. 
Uh, I will read verse uh, 12 and verse 13. For the seed shall be prosperous. The wine, the vine shall be, shall be, shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their dew, and I will cause the remnant of these people to possess all these things. You know, the people of Israel, when their father sinned, they, they, they were serving the other gods, the idols, those stones, those carved wood, which have mouths but cannot speak, which add ears but cannot hear, which add eyes but cannot see. And the Bible says those that serve them, that worship them, they are like them. So their fathers were serving these idols. They will make, they will take a wood and they will put it down. They will, you know, they will just form it and form it and make the eyes, make the face, make the head, make, make everything. They now put it down and they pour wine on it. They pour palm oil on it. They, they make color knots. They spread it around it and they now begin to bow down and they begin to say, give us children. Oh, I am I'm barren. Give me child. And they come to say, I am poor. Make me rich. Oh, uh, they, they come and they say, I, 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 am, uh, I, I am being pursued by enemies. Save me. They say all these things to idols. And you know, they were worshipping the prince of the air. They were worshipping the, the prince, the, 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 the moon, the power of the moon and of the stars. And God was not happy about them. And God allowed them to be cast away. And you know, they were in such situation. And you know, the people fell before the Lord. But now, all these things, when they, all these people, when they were gone, they, 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 they are children. The Lord is now letting them know that, uh, you know, I am going to make you prosperous. I am going to remove all the evils that I've laid on your fathers. I'm going to remove all the calamities that befell your forebears. But I am going to bless you. I am going to make you prosperous. I'm going to open the gate of heaven and pour my blessings upon you. The dew of heaven will fall upon you. This is what the Lord is saying to the people here. And as he's saying it to them, he's saying it to us here. To you, to you, to you, to everyone present here. He says, for the seed shall be prosperous. The Lord will make your seed to become prosperous. Unlike the time when the land was barren. Barren and it could not produce. You know, everything dried in, this, in the field. But now the Lord is saying, I'm going to look mercifully upon you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to open the gate of heaven. And I will pour the dew of heaven upon you. And this is what the Lord is going to do tonight. He says, uh, uh, the, the, the vine shall give her fruit. What do you think uh, it means to say the vine will give her fruit? That is, it will be productive. The Lord wants you to be productive. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to regain all the years that the, the locust, the kankawam, the palmawam, and all those, uh, uh, all those uh, evil, evil things that have devoured your land. The Lord wants to get rid of them for you so that you'll be able to produce. So that you'll be able to get in abundance. Because our God is a God of abundance. So he says that the vine shall give her fruit. And the ground shall give her increase. You know, he will return the years that those enemies of our land have eaten, have devoured, have destroyed. He is going to give us a restoration. He is going to make us to be prosperous. When we talk of prosperity, you know, some people kick against prosperity. They will say prosperity teachers. I want to tell you, the Bible clearly teaches about prosperity. 
The Lord wants you to be prosperous. He doesn't want you to be to be going in, in, in hunger, to be a pauper. That is not what God calls you to be. If you are a child of God, you must be booming in the blessings of God. Amen to that. So it's not, uh, you know, when we talk about the prosperity preachers, what we don't want in that is that when people just concentrate on, you know, you will prosper, this will be well with you, not concerning uh, something that you make people to turn to God. If you don't turn to God and you are prosperous, you know, it's not prosperity. You know, when we talk of real prosperity, prosperity is in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. For you, you have money, you have houses, you have cars, you have buildings. You, this is not what we call prosperity. Amen. You know, this is just one part of it. If you are soul, if your spirit is despondent Amen. of the power of God, of the, the release of the spirit of God, you are not prosperous. That's right. You aren't prospered as all. And that is why when we talk of prosperity, the Bible preaches it. The Bible tells it. He says that uh, the Lord will bless your ground and shall give increase. And the heavens shall give their due. Their due, you know. When the people of Israel, when they turn back from God, God made use of Elijah to close the door of heaven and he put the key of heaven in his pocket. For three years and six months, rain never touched the ground. And there was a drought, famine. Everywhere was dry. And uh, you know, the king was already becoming a mess. People don't respect him anymore because his own time is a time of trouble, a time of famine, a time of lack, a time of Evil, evil things all around. People could not eat. People could not get water. People could not get food. Because the heavens Shut have been closed. You know, heaven is like a brass. A brass, you know, the brass is black. It will blacken everything. So there was no peace, no joy. Everywhere was sad. Because they could not get the, the, the things that will make their lives to be vibrant. Mm. So in that situation, you know, Ahab, the king, was not looking for Elijah just to, to, to plead and say, let the heavens open. But you know, uh, until Obadiah, his servant, saw Elijah, he did not know where he could find him. And when Obadiah saw him, because, uh, you know, Obadiah has been told, wherever you see that man, please let me know. If it, will rem if it will take us to kill him, if he doesn't want to agree, we kill him. Mm -hmm. And because of that, Obadiah was afraid of telling the king that he has seen Elijah. But what do you see? Uh, 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 Elijah now made a promise with Obadiah. He says, go and bring the king and all the, the servants of Baal. We will go to Mount Carmel. And we are going to see whose God is God. Amen. The God that answers by fire will be our God. Amen. And so Obadiah now went back to the king, told the king. The king called all the idol worshippers, all those who were worshipping Astoresh, and uh, those who were worshipping uh, 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 Baal, and all those, uh, uh, those uh, gods. They now gathered together at Mount Carmel. Elijah said, take one bullock for yourself and reserve one for me. Now, call your God. Mm. And if your God answers, it is that God that we will be serving. Mm. And you know, do all you can. So they all gathered together, you know. They know how to make merriment. Mm. If it's, uh, you know, if it's, we say we want to have a party here, we want to have a party. And we make all the, 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 the this place glowing with lights. And you know, you see the music, the music of Jamla Jamu Jamla Bumu Baba. You know, people will gather. But we are not entertaining here. We are ministry. 
So that is why people don't want to come out en mass as they used to come. But those of us who are here tonight, the Lord is going to bless you. So they came together and they danced and danced and rejoiced round, round. You know, from morning till noon, they were still shouting, still shouting, moving round the, the, their God. Answer us, oh bear, answer us. Uh, and Elijah was make, uh, making jest of them, deriding them. And you know, he said, maybe he has traveled. Call him very well. Maybe he's sleeping. Wake him up. Your shout is not enough. And you know, they shouted him all. They cut themselves with, uh, with knives. They started, you know, drinking their own blood. <laughs> answer us, answer us. You, you are our king. You know how it is. <laughs> all these things they did. They made all these things. Nothing happened. Nothing. And you know, Amen. when they were tired, they were rugged, they, they hardly could That's breathe it. properly, and they were. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you are serving a dead God, you will be making all this much ado, yes. and nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. So, when you saw all these things, you said, Well, now I know you are tired. I know you cannot go further. Now, give me the chance. You know, he said, Set my own block. They set the block. Bullock. And you know, they, they, he said, Pour water upon it. They poured water. You know, in the gutter, pour water down. They poured water. And you know, everything was filled with water. And you know, you, be, you know that uh, when we talk of fire, fire and water, they are not friendly. You would think that, uh, you know, fire will never come out in such a situation. So Elijah wanted to show them the power of God, who is able to do all things. And what do you see? When Elijah just said, Oh, loving God, my God, I am calling you not because I do not know you. It's because that these people may believe. Mm-hmm. And as he was praying, it wasn't even quite two minutes. The fire just came down. Leaked the water around the God. Leaked all everywhere. And you know, Consume the, 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 the bullock, the, 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 the bullock for, for sacrifice. And as that was happening, all of those who were serving Baal just fell down. And they said, your God, we will serve your God. And you know, the God that answered by fire became the God of the land. And you know, all those people, they repented and they turned to God. And when they turned to God, what was the result? They became prosperous. And Elijah told them, quickly run home before the rain comes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Elijah just took his hand into the pocket, opened the gate of heaven. How does, you, how does he do that? <laughs> it's by prayer. prayer. You know, when you pray, an effectual, effective, fervent prayer, it avails much. So when we talk of the key, prayer is the key. Mm-hmm. Prayer is the believer's key. If you have that key, you will open the gate of your prosperity Mm -hmm. and the Lord will pour down the blessings upon you and you will not lack anything. Mm -hmm. So he opened the gate of heaven and uh, you know, before you know it, the the cloud has gathered. And uh, you know, his servant said, oh my Lord, the, the cloud is gathering. He said, go and watch it again. He went and he watched and he said, go and watch it again. And he started watching and I said, you know, you quickly run home. And people, you know, <laughs> before they got home, the rain has come. <laughs> and what do you think will be the resultant effect? The land will begin to yield in abundance. So the land was replenished. The time of refreshing has come. So tonight, I want you to see what the Lord is doing. He he wants to prosper you. He wants you to be in the the midst of prosperity. He does not want you to suffer. He does not want you to, you know, some people will say, I've been looking for a job I can't get. You know, I'm not blaming them. You know, it's just the level, the level. You know, there are times when we, we pray, honestly, we pray, and because we do not want know how to pray, but the Spirit is the one that helps us to pray. The Bible says that we do not know how to pray, but the Spirit will 
We pray, we agonize for us with the groanings that cannot be uttered. So uh, at times we, we continue to wrestle on, and wrestle and wrestle until we get to know the will of God. You know, it's, it's common with us. It's not peculiar to somebody, to anyone. At times we do not know what God wants us to do. And we begin to say, is it this? Is it that? But the moment you touch the right key like this, <laughs> it will, you will say, what have I been doing all this time, Lord? There was a time I was trying to, 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 to make this thing to work. You know, the, the wire that I should, be put, that I should put in, in one, one place, I was using the other one. And I did not get it. You know, I was doing it on and on and on. The thing was just like that. I would flip, oh, 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 nothing happened. And I was just doing it, doing it, doing it. And when I was tired, I said, well, I don't know what to do with this thing. And I said, Lord, help me to find solution to this thing. You see now, praying what I should have done earlier on. And I said, Lord, help me to be able to find solution to this thing. At times, we, we forget. And we, we think that it is our ability, our able, ability to be able to do this. And now I, I was able to say, Lord, help me to do this thing. And Lord, I don't know what is happening. And you know, I just, uh, my mind just went there to do it again. And I said, God, there, I saw one green, I saw one white. I said, and I saw at, at the root of the thing, one, where the, the, the uh, green should go, where the white should go. And I just put them at the right. And the thing, wow, <laughs> the thing started talking. Yes. We don't know where to put the key. Yes. We have to point, to point, point, point to. We don't know where to point. And that is why we ramble and ramble. But if we will wait for the spirit, yes. the spirit. Mm -hmm. And you know, at times we sing, when we sing, we shout, we do, we do this, we do that. It may not be in that that the Lord will appear. It will be when we are quiet, as you are quiet, the Spirit will just drop something there. Drop something there. And you begin to say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. But you may not be able to reach there until you break yourself loose in the presence of God. And you sing, you dance, you jump, and you do this. And when you jump and you dance, and you sit down, the Lord will just say, my son, I've seen your effort. I know you want to serve me. Jesus. This is my way. Follow me. Jesus. Amen. Amen. So when we talk of prosperity, it is there in the scripture. The Lord is ready to bless us. But uh, you know, there are some hindrances to prosperity. We may not know. There are certain hindrances that will not allow us to reach our targeted goal that will not allow us to touch our, 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 our blessing. But the moment we know all these hindrances, you say, you go, Lord, you go, you go. And what happens? They all disappear. And we begin to see the way the Lord wants us to see. We begin to catch the way the Lord wants us to catch. So at this moment, I want uh, grace to come forward and give us some of these some of these hindrances that may hinder us from reaching our our, our prosperity and i believe that uh, the lord will open our eyes and we will be able to correct our lives in the name of jesus Amen. grace Amen. the ball is on your court oh, in your court <laughs> amen amen hallelujah hallelujah it is not by power nor by might but by the grace of God, nobody is, is something except God who is able to do all things. That is why I am giving all glory unto God that is doing it in us. It is not by anybody's power. I don't have anything, but I am trusting on the Lord that is leading and doing all. Because woman's effort is not enough to face the challenges in the world. The challenges at every moment. As we are sitting here, there are many challenges that surround each and every one of us. It is bound to be. Because we saw that in the wilderness, 
when Jesus went there, when the Lord led him to the wilderness to pray, he was surrounded by challenges. And those challenges, by the grace of God, he was able to pull them away because he is Lord and God is the creator. So every time we are in the midst of challenges, it is the power of God that is able to hold. And when we talk of hindrances to prosperity, I love God for one thing. God wants us to prosper. Yes. That is why I wholeheartedly trust in him. If I trust in a friend, the flesh may make that friend to misbehave, but God will never. If I put my trust in a king or a leader, that leader may be tempted because of the body, because of the flesh. But Jesus Christ will never fail. He will stand by you. He will never leave you. He will hold your hand. Even if you behave foolishly, He will still hold you. You know how the shepherd controls the sheep? When the sheep uh, feels that this, the right side is the best way, and the shepherd is trying to say, this is the way, go this way, go this way. And the sheep thought, no, no, it is this. The shepherd will take the rod. And immediately the shepherd uh, moved the rod like this to the sheep. The sheep will automatically go to the shepherd's way. So that is one thing about our uh, enjoying the prosperity that God has for us. We need to honestly obey what God is telling us. If we fail to obey him as the shepherd, we will just miss it. Another thing is what we acquire in the world. Entrances to our prosperity is when we are holding those things that we acquire as ours. They are not ours. We are just, we are like a, a tenant in a house with all the wealth that God gives unto us. We are just there to use it, use it to press him. But when we hold those wealth as if they are ours, then we will be limiting our prosperity. And when we talk of prosperity, it is not only the money that we acquire, the dresses that we have, the amount of buildings that we were able to build, or amount of cars that we are able to control, or the corporation that we have. It's not, that's not only the wealth. Eternal life is the other arm of wealth, the earthly wealth and the eternal wealth. The eternal wealth, hindrances to it, is the same thing as hindrances to the physical wealth that we acquire on earth. So when we take those wealth and we feel that we are the controller, I have the authority, I can move it. We don't allow God to move us on those wealth. Then we are hindering ourselves of the eternal wealth and the earthly wealth. I want to give you an example. There was a time when we went for a program in one of the villages. It was a terrible place, a remote place indeed. It was the efforts of UNICEF that helped them to dig well and get a clean water to drink. And over there, you know what can happen in such a village, sicknesses, this, that, limitations, and so on. And as we were there, in the mosquito, in the midst of mosquito, it was as if we are swimming in mosquitoes. <laughs> and the Lord gave us, gave us the, uh, uh, the, the grace to endure it. I just heard that voice. The Lord spoke to me and said, look here, when you get to Ibadan, because we went from Ibadan to that place. When you get 
to Ibadan. The money in your purse, and that money is just five naira. Go and give so, 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 and so. And, you know, as human beings, I felt this is what I depended upon for the office work. Because I would go to the office on the Monday. When we get, on, when we get back on Sunday, we prepare for office on Monday. And when I go to this uh, sister, and I said, well, I'm sorry, this is too small, because five naira is too small <laughs> to give somebody. I said, but I, I, I don't want to disappoint God. I don't know why he led me to do it. I believe there is something that God wanted to do, either in my life or in your life. And when she got the money, she praised the Lord. She said, oh, I will continue to serve the Lord. I, I said, why? She said, I had problems in my body. And I had been praying about it for a long time. And God led me to a pharmacist, that I should go to that pharmacist and tell the pharmacist. Because she did not have money to go to God knew her situation. She was led to that pharmacist. And when she got to that pharmacist, the drug uh, cost seven naira something and she only had two naira something it remains five naira <laughs> to add to it <laughs> and as i gave her the money she said i'm going to the pharmacist now to pay for the drug i was just looking at her and what happened to me I was blessed more than five naira. Not only that, what about the tithes and offerings unto God? Please, as a believer, don't joke with tithes. If your tithe is $1,000, faithfully give it to God and see what will happen. This year, I was filled with many responsibilities and I was just struggling and the Lord told me, why don't you pay your tithe? Then I said, this is the money. I will think of this. I need to pay for this. I need to pay for this. I need to pay for this. I need to care for this. I need to care for that. If I take the tithe out of it, there is no way I'll be able to meet the needs. And one must eat. Come with me. Because we need energy to do our work. So I said, okay, I will try this month. And when I got my money, I just took the 10% out of it. I set it aside. And I said, I won't be tempted again to use you, you this time. <laughs> Immediately, I took it to all the places that I want to share it. Because I used to share my time to different uh, work of God. So, what did I see? I just saw another sister that came to me. to me without telling her anything and she brought she said well I'm sorry that I did not come on time because God woke me up and said see that amount that you have go to the market now buy so 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 and so 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 and so 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 and so and take it to that girl and, you know, as I was coming from the office, I met her children on my door. And I pity her. You know why I pity her? She also needed attention. And I said, Lord, who is like unto you? Then I remember what happened to me at Idere. 
Well, that was what I have, and I was asked to give somebody. So God can make us to prosper if we release everything unto him. Don't listen to people. You know, there are many uh, teachings today about tithe. They will tell you 2% is okay. No, take your 10%. The Bible says, Bring all the tithes unto me. If you bring it and see what I will do. If I will not open, that is Malachi chapter, uh, is it chapter 3, 8? Chapter 3, verse 8. Wait for me and see if I will never open the gates of heaven and rain down blessings upon you. So, if we neglect to pay our tithe, we are hindering our prosperity. I must tell you, I have many testimonies. What about when thief came to where we were living? Thief took their many things away. My dresses were there. Nothing was paid out of it. And I said, Lord, I thank you. This is part of the blessing of the tithing that I'm doing. So, tithing is a good blessing. It's a good way to receive the blessings of the Lord. Because the energy we are using, it is God that gave us. The knowledge that we are using, it is God that gave us. The understanding, the influences that we are using, it is God that gave us. What about if we have those influences and they are worthless? If God does not bless it, they will be worthless. There was a situation about somebody that wanted to be president in Nigeria. She, he did everything, but it was worthless. What I could see in it is that he, had a, he, he, he depended on his power, his ability, and his influences. And you know, that is why whatever we have, let us put our trust in the Lord. Let us let God know that we are trusting him under those things, under those wealth that we have, then we will be able to prosper in it. I also thank God for a situation in the Bible, in the book of Mark, chapter 16. Let's see Mark chapter 16. Jesus sent us to the world in chapter 16 from verse 15 it says and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned and this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. In this passage, we saw many blessings in it, like praying for the sick, recovering, speaking in tongues. If, for adventure, one is caught up with deadly, eating deadly things, it will not hurt. Why? Because we are following the Lord. We are prayerful. So if we are not prayerful, as he said, we will be missing many things. Even to pray for ourselves, we will be afraid. Anything that happens to you, first of all, lay your hand upon it. If it is hitting, if it is aching, if it is headache, first of all, lay your hands upon it and say, the Bible says, I will lay my hand on the sea, and they shall recover. Try it. 
If you don't try it, you won't feel it. And if you don't feel it, you won't be, you won't be bold. You will just be tossed about. When a, a misconception of a healing about the Lord, about the Word of God, you know some people, they, 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 don't, they don't understand what it is, what healing is. They felt it has gone with the apostles. They felt it is not practical again. But I'm telling you, the Lord that did it with the apostles, the Lord that did it with Christ, is the same God that is working it today. He will perfect it. If you practice it, it will be part of you. That is your blessings of serving the Lord. Because you cannot serve God in vain. And that is why you see many people, they say they believe in the Lord, but they cannot say, this is what I'm enjoying in the Lord. Because they did not practice what they are hearing in the Word of God. They did not practice what they read about the Word of God. They did not try to use it and see how it works. So if you use it, if you fail to use the Word of God, if you fail to follow the precepts, you may not be able to get anything. You may be thinking that other things is better. But other things are not better. They are not better at all. I am, I am saying it. I know what I'm saying. Only faith in the Lord Jesus can hold you, can, can make you to overpower the forces that are in the world. You know why the world is polluted? It is the pride of one of the creation, Lucifer, the devil. And when he came to the world, God made another thing to counter his domination of the world. He made Jesus Christ to come to the world. Amen. And when Jesus came to the world, it was announced that we are delivered today. There is happiness in the land today because a son is born to us. A child is born to us in the city of David. There is peace today. The, uh, the bad influences that the fallen angels has been doing. We have brought the counter influence that we make people to have their rest, to have their peace, to have their, their opportunities, to have the benefits of serving the Lord. So when you are serving the Lord, you have the benefits. If you all utterly leave everything unto God, as Jesus said, that whoever believes, God doesn't force anybody. If you don't believe, he won't bother about the world. He will be looking at you. He will not be angry with you. He will, he will see you as maybe one day he will understand. Maybe one day he will change. Maybe one day. But if maybe, maybe, continue like that. And that person could die in that situation. There is no remedy again. Because after death is judgment. That is what the Bible says. That is why we should come out of whatever is limiting us to enjoy the God that we are serving. God wanted us to prosper, and we must prosper. I must prosper. I know it. I always say it. I must prosper. Whatever we end in my prosperity, they must depart. Because God said, I must prosper. He created man to prosper. He put man in charge, as we read yesterday. We saw it in the book of Genesis chapter 1 yesterday, that God put man in charge over all that he created. So we must prosper. And whatever we hinder us, we depart, if we really mean business to prosper. But if we don't, we just want to be languishing around. Well, God is not moved. It will just be looking at us. But I'm telling you, it is real. Only faith in the Lord, as the song that we gave to you, is able to hold us. I remember the time that God led us to make that song. It was a terrible situation. But God led us until we get to the, to the victorious point that he wanted us to get. And that day, God just opened our mouth to sing that song, only faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other way. If we add other ways to it, to our faith in the Lord, it may hinder us, it may injure us, it may leave us to the hand of the enemy, it may leave us 
to a hopeless situation. It may make us to see it as if God is sleeping. God is not sleeping, but he wanted us to believe in him. In Psalm 34, it says, The son of lion may lack and be hungry. You can open it, Psalm 34. But those who trust in the Lord, they will never lack good things. So if we trust in the Lord, we will never lack good things. But if we are not trusting in the Lord, the creation will just be tossing us around. You get what I mean? Creation will be tossing such a person around. Animals can be God over such people. Stone can be God over such people. Tree can be God over such people. And look at the tree. Is there any mouth? Even if there is mouth, is there? A, can you hear him talk? Can you hear the tree talk? No. No. But only faith in the Lord Jesus will make you to be free from the oppression of the tree, oppression of the stone, oppression of the sand, oppression of the ear, oppression of underneath the ear. Only faith in Jesus will lift you up above all those oppressions. We are telling you what we have experienced in the Lord, and we are telling you so that you will come out of whatever that the enemy may be using to oppress you. We like people to be free because we know what we enjoy in the freedom with the Lord. When you are free, you are free with the God you are serving, you are trusting in Him, you are depending upon Him, you don't put anything above God. It is God first. If you don't put anything above God, you will enjoy God. Nothing will molest you, nothing will embarrass you, nothing will make you to, to, to be sad because God is always at the side of those who trust in him. And um, Psalm 34 that I said. In verse 7, it says, The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him, and delivered them. Do you hear that? About those that trusted in the Lord, that feared the Lord. Those who fear the Lord will never have other God. You remember Exodus 20? Don't have other God with me. Don't have any image. Don't have any other thing that you will fear. But fear me. Talk to me. Relate with me. I will, I will care for you. Then it says, in verse 10, it says, The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. That is it. You know who lion is? Lion is the king of the animals. And lion can never lack food because he, he, he knows how to make it. But the Bible says, even the son of lion, the young lion, they may lack, but you will never lack. You will never lack. Why? It is because God created everything. You are under God, directing your affairs, leading you, guiding you, and connecting you. So, I am praying that all hindrances to our prosperity depart from us today in the name of Jesus. Amen.